Coming up, the Kentucky Supreme Court overturned a vote that was overwhelmingly supported at the polls. And new reports from experts show that a huge drop in gas prices could be in the cards for this summer. Plus, the Perry County Fair is in full swing. We've got a look at a popular pair of natural-born swimmers who are stealing the show at this year's festivities. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. 529 on this Friday. It is June 14th. I'm Will Puckett, and thank you for tuning in to Mountain News This Morning. Yesterday, fairly nice day once mm -hmm. we got outside the morning hours, yeah. and Brandon, today setting up to be just as nice. Mm -hmm. and the, but the morning hours are the coolest this morning. We were very unseasonably cool for this time of the year. Let's take a look at what's going on. Some fog around this morning as well. It's clear skies, and we're looking at the WIMT studio camera, and you can see that fog off in the distance as daylight approaches. Up on top of the mountain, though, no fog up that way. It's all in the valleys this morning, Buffalo Mountain, and we're looking at some fog pro problems over into parts of Harlan and London as well this morning. So just be careful. Temperatures still dropping. 45 are the coldest spots. Somerset, Williamsburg and Jonesville. 52 and 53 and Logan and Pinewell respectively are the warm spots, so to speak, this morning. So a little extra on the coffee meter if you're heading out the door this morning and heading off to work or uh, as Will mentioned earlier, maybe taking, getting ready to get the kids up to go maybe to summer camp or something like that. Vacation Bible school going on in a lot of areas tonight. We're seeing sunshine across the board today. 75, a daytime high, so not too bad for uh, about mid-June there. Uh, the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Will? Not too bad at all, Brandon. Thank you. Well, in November, Kentucky voters overwhelmingly supported a ballot measure that would gr grant guaranteed rights for crime victims. Those votes have now been thrown out, and the proposed amendment is void. The Kentucky Supreme Court ruled Thursday that the ballot question on Marcy's law was too vague. Advocates for the amendment say it's only the latest setback in a long battle. Hillary Thornton explains where they plan to go from here. So I broke most of the bones in my body as well as lost my right leg. It was several years ago Alex Audi was seriously injured by a drunken boater. Now using her story to advocate for Marcy's law. It wouldn't help me now. Um, but it would help people who have been in my situation. Lawmakers working for several years to get that measure passed, achieving that last year, putting it on the ballot for voters to decide. In November, 63% of Kentuckians choosing to adopt the constitutional amendment. However, the state Supreme Court upholding Franklin Circuit Court's ruling that the question put on the ballot was too vague. It's a long road and it's sad when you know you have to start over. The decision explaining that the full text should have been included and that there is a requirement for the full text to be posted at least 90 days before the vote. Marcy's law aiming to give victims rights. One big thing advocates say is the notice of any court proceedings or an offender's release from custody. It's huge for me to know that I can run into him in the grocery store. This ruling making the measure void for now. And both the Marcy's law for Kentucky group and Senator Westerfield say they hope this is not the end of the road for seeing Marcy's law here in Kentucky. The bill sponsor, Senator Whitney Westerfield, says he hopes the General Assembly will take up the proposal again. Adi and other advocates agreeing. We do know now that people are behind us. I, we'll be back. At the Capitol, Hillary Thornton, WYMT Mountain News. Now, the Kentucky Supreme Court also ruled that Governor Matt Bevin does have the right to reorganize state boards while the legislature is not in session. Attorney General Andy Bashir sued the governor after he overhauled several state education boards in the summer of 2017. The attorney general argued Governor Bevin overstepped his authority. Bevin's attorney said prior governors had made the same moves. Yesterday, the state's high court upheld a lower court's ruling that the governor's actions were completely legal. Additionally, the Kentucky Supreme Court ruled that police can be sued for damages when their car chases lead to the death or injury of pedestrians. This overturning the original decision from 1952 that granted immunity to police officers involved. WKYT's Nick Oliver is digging deeper into what this means going forward. In January 2014, Gonzalez and a passenger were killed after being struck by Keenan McLaughlin while he was driving and trying to get away from a Scott County Sheriff's deputy on US 25 in Lexington. Now an investigation would show Deputy Sheriff Jeremy Johnson did have his lights on, but not sirens. In court documents, he says when he noticed the sirens were not working, he abandoned the chase at the same time Gonzalez and Geneva Spencer were struck and killed. 
This has now raised a conversation on a 72-year-old ruling in Chambers versus Ideal Pure Milk Company. Now, in that ruling, it was decided law enforcement could not be at fault for any damages or deaths that happened during a chase. Today, that changed. The Supreme Court of Kentucky overturned that. Now making Gonzalez's death able to travel to trial against Jeremy Johnson. That I'm grateful that our police are out there and our sheriff's deputies are out there doing, doing their job. And I want them to make good decisions. And I think most of them do most of the time. Um, hopefully this will be an incentive for them to always make a good decision. Now again, that was Nick Oliver reporting. The premise of this would mean that any wrongdoing could lead to legal action. Some police departments already do not chase. Kentucky is one of the last states to overturn the decades old ruling. Well, the audit of a former sheriff's fee account is being referred to the state attorney general's office. The audit says former sheriff Delano Huff did not give receipts for all vehicle inspections in 2017. The audit also says a deputy turned in $400 for inspections done during a furlough period. In addition, it says two car dealers in Perry County paid the deputy a total of $6,300 for inspections, but that money did not make it to the former sheriff's fee account. Well, it appears environmental issues are behind the federal government's decision to withdraw its approval for building a federal prison in Letcher County. That is expected to be announced Monday. The Bureau of Prisons released a statement to WYMT saying in part, given new information received, additional analysis should be undertaken to determine if there are significant new circumstances or information relevant to environmental concerns on the proposed action. A reexamination requires that the record of decision be withdrawn pending additional environmental analysis. The project was expected to create 300 new jobs. Congressman Hal Rogers says he is not giving up. Experts are forecasting a huge drop in gas prices. According to AAA, the national average for regular gas currently stands at $2.72 a gallon. That is 17 cents lower than this year's high than this year's high in early May. One analyst says US drivers could be paying less than $2.50 for a gallon in the next few months. He predicts the national average could drop to around $2.25. If that happens, the analyst says nearly half the nation's gas stations could probably be selling gas for less than two bucks a gallon. Here in Kentucky, the average is $2.52. That is about seven cents cheaper than last week. We have mapped out what you can expect across the region. You will find some of the lowest prices in Bell and Laurel counties where gas is about $2.33. A gallon. RFG Society, a coffee shop in Pike County, is working to become a tourist stop. Owner Jerrica Taylor says she sees people from around the globe because the location of her shop is perfect for tourists who are traveling through Elkhorn City. Jerrica said she is often blessed to meet people from all over. She recently placed a map on her wall offering these far flung travelers a chance to leave their mark in eastern Kentucky. It's just awesome seeing all these people come in from like away from here and I mean way away from here. Taylor recently made coffee for a man from the Netherlands who was cycling through the area. Follow the RFG Society Facebook page to keep up with her visitors. A group of students from Ohio served breakfast to people in Pikeville Thursday morning as part of an outreach from an organization called Experience Mission. The free pancake breakfast was served at Grace Fellowship in Pikeville and was open to the community. The students prepared, served, and delivered meals. Representatives from the organization say this is just one way they give back. Our goal as a organization is to come alongside of the community. We're not just here to help, but we want to show dignity and provide justice for the local members of the community. Experience Mission is in Pikeville for 11 weeks and has brought in groups from other areas to complete a variety of projects. Well, yesterday kicked off the annual, the fifth annual Perry County Fair. This year, the fair brought in two special guests that just so happened to be great at swimming. WYMT's Katie Cook met the pair at the fair Thursday and has more on the dynamic duo. Meet Sierra and Zoe. They're really good swimmers, I know that. And they're real cute. And it's no doubt that these two sea lions are showstoppers. They do backflip, they dance, they do a lot of tricks. It's amazing. And one of them shares a special story of her own. Zoe was rescued from the San Diego Zoo after having a bad eye condition. So we have to take care of her eye. But with a little TLC, both of the beautiful creatures are now living their best lives. They eat all day. They can sleep. They have doctors. 
medications and all the care that we can do for them, we do. Unfortunately, this isn't the case for some of the sea lions in the wild. A lot of sea lions right now, they're not in good shape. So during the show, Marisol teaches her audience the importance of recycling. Because when plastic items get into the ocean, it makes it impossible for sea lions like Sierra and Zoe to live a healthy life. <laughs> and as for these two, well, they ate lunch and it looks like they're resting up for their next show. Looks real cute. In Perry County, Katie Cook, WIMT Mountain News. <laughs> Aren't they just so cute? Gotcha. Well, if you want to catch the sea lions tricks in action, they are performing every day of the Perry County Fair at 5.30 and 7.30. Children will have the opportunity to take pictures with them after the show at the Perry County Park. Sure, like <laughs> Teachers from all school districts are welcome to visit Treetop Adventure in Laurel County at the Levi Jackson State Park for free. All teachers can climb for free as long as they are accompanied by a paid guest and have one form of ID. Beginners and experienced climbers have five trails to choose from, which include zip lines, bridges, and obstacles. Treetop Adventure workers say they wish to thank every teacher who dedicates many days throughout the year to educate young minds. It's a great opportunity for teachers, obviously, to be able to come out and, and we are able to show our appreciation to them for all the hard work that they do through the school year and also to get the kids out into the public and out, and out about uh, in nature and, and climbing uh, around. Teacher Appreciation Day at the park started Wednesday. You can visit again today as well as June 19th through the 21st. Well, as season three of Netflix's hit series 13 Reasons Why premieres later this year, groups in eastern Kentucky want to tackle the tough issues shown on screen through education. It's jacket weather this morning, but this afternoon looks close to perfect. I mean, the Alabama the song of the same name. I'll have the Father's Day forecast or weekend forecast in about three minutes.